Belly by Prosper Oshimana featuring to Philosophy and Mississippi. Powerful. Thanks for joining from Kenya, uh, Victor Tavi. God bless you in Jesus' name. Okay, what's up? Good evening, everyone. Let's wait for two more minutes and let's get to the business of today. First thing God for is. Strong word from the land. Malako Sobe Lege Oh, right now. Yes. Oh, right now. Yes. Oh, Amola, oh. God bless you. Pastor Jola, how you doing, sir? Okay, good evening. How has been your day? Still expecting good news? <laughs> it will come. Pastor Lied. It's good to have you online so tonight. Oh, oh, thank you, Respect. Kavala Kaprosu Fekete Goshi Kafala Baba 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 Fekete Gokoshaba. Yes, Omolaya. What's up? What's up? What's up? Thank you, Jesus. Right now. Oh, oh, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Midnight mindset. Midnight mindset, Pastor I'm so good. Grateful to God for His mercy. I believe you're doing well, 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 too. Thank God for you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me prepare to get my notes as to get into the business of today. I believe God is going to bless you. I believe God is going to bless you. Let me pause this music and um, bring up my notes. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise, glory, and honor to you. In Jesus' name. So, yeah, let's get into this. David Olumefun, God bless you. Thanks for joining. Ronke, what's up? How are you doing today? Bless your heart. So, 
life on the papa is on, on facebook and this is grasp is a, an instagram business let me use that word so I want to welcome you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is Deepak Kwanis and it's a privilege to be before you again today. For those of you that are part of the tribe, part of my loyalists and uh, followers, you know definitely that we do this every Thursday, except otherwise communicated. And we are privileged to be before you, to be a blessing to you in a way you know, that I believe is special, intensive, intentional and instructive. Thanks again. This is Grasp. This is an outreach of his influence church, which is a ministry that God has blessed us to start in Medway side of United Kingdom. It be God bless you. Good to see you. Um, and, and, and we take this as an outreach. What I do or what we do on this platform is support the lifestyle balance. We just present subject matters that probably we might not be able to fix on a Sunday morning, bring discussions that we believe that as a way you know, of generating a light of or stirring up spirit of knowledge among us and uh, some other stuff like that that we believe. So, so, so it's, 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 on this platform, we don't just only just preach, we trust God for the spirit of prayer and the spirit of prophecy. So that somebody can be encouraged, somebody can be ignited with fire, somebody can just carry a new revelation of the things of the Spirit. And definitely, <laughs> by the time you sleep tonight, you know you're going to wake up in the morning with a sound, you know, sound of songs, a revelation of the Spirit, inspiration from the Most High God, encouragement that proceeds by, you know, that is partnered by the Spirit of God alone, then you have enough energy, new strength and stamina to go ahead with the counsel of God for your life. And I'm telling you, we hear again and again testimonies and encouragement of how God has used this platform to be a blessing to people. Somebody was watching the YouTube video <clears throat> last week, you know, because we saved this and we posted it on YouTube. Say, so, oh, I missed this thing. I'm going to be, you know, joining you live today. And if you are live with us, just let me know. So today, I want to partner, I want to further that discussion last week. If you're not with us last week, please go on YouTube or even on Instagram, IGTV or Facebook. You will see what the discussion you know, we, did, we discussed, you no know, silent breaker. We are just trying to encourage somebody, <laughs> encourage somebody specifically, you know, in the body of Christ to say that, look, the fact that it's happening to all and it's not happening to you, does not mean that you are less special to God or you're less important. The fact that you come for your service and the atmosphere was so sharp with the spirit of prophecy and the professor on everybody and they excluded you. <laughs> that doesn't make you a sinner. Dr. Yavis, God bless you. That doesn't make you a sinner. <laughs> Hallelujah. Even sometimes makes you uh, that it is a sign that um, you, you are having a, 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 a deeper walk you know, with God that that um, uh, no, no, that does not require public attention, so to say. So I trust God that God is going to give you more encouragement, more energy to be able to push in in the assignment of God for your life. This is in Jesus' name. I want to discuss and place a burden of prayer with you tonight on this subject matter, midnight mindset. But let's bring a context into this. Uh, for that reason, I'm going to be reading Matthew 25 to you. Matthew 25 is a chapter with diverse parables, but the one that is my concern is that of <clears throat> the ten virgins. <clears throat> and as I had this sound in my spirit during the week, I knew that this is a word for somebody today. Let's read a little bit of it, and then we'll begin to push in. Matthew 25 from verse 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. The Bible says, Then, the Bible says, Then, the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins. Who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom? It's a kingdom story. But two says five of them were foolish and five were wise. When you hear the word foolish in the Bible, don't think it, don't take it as an insult. It's not an insult. It's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just a state of mind. Are you with me? It's a state of mind. So it's a five were foolish, five were wise. It said, For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take any extra oil with them. But the wise took flax of oil along with them, with their lambs. Verse 5 says, While the bridegroom lingered and was slow in coming, they all began to nod their head and they all fell asleep. Same thing happens to everybody. <laughs> but at midnight, there was a shout. And I'm praying that God will give you a sound of shout. At midnight, there was a shout. The shout was not in the midday. It was at the midnight. 
when it was the toughest season, there was a shout of recovery. Boom! There was a shout. Behold, the bridegroom go out and meet him. But the unfortunate thing I say is that the foolish, you know, they got up. I know the wise got up and put on their lands, but the foolish got up, their lands were dry. So the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lands are going out. But the wise replied, We don't have enough for the estate. You know, <laughs> go and buy for yourself. Serious story, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a real story. Father, in the name of Jesus, Safando Prekusifekete Prokosu Palabashanda, because we believe distance is not a barrier. We just ask you by your mercy and by your grace today that you give us utterance. We make it clear, you will make it clean. You will make it clear, you make it clean, and you make it convincing. For everyone that is sound my voice, I know definitely when a season in our lives and seasons are diverse. Some are in their midday, some are in their midnight. But whatever the circumstances is, when you bring knowledge to us, you give us ability to be able to decode your mindset, your agenda, and to be able to align on represent. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for the spirit of alignment today, especially for the few and the little that are struggling with their work with God. They are struggling for a testimony. They are waiting for a prophetic word to find expression. They are practically in nice season of their life whereby they know that, whole oh, when will this be over? I ask that you will bring a word of encouragement by the power of your spirit tonight in the name name of the Lord Jesus. Let it be clean, let it be clear, and let it be convincing. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, let me start by saying this to you, brothers and sisters. Everybody, everybody in life, pass through process, everybody. When you come to the kingdom, the kingdom is a place of process. The kingdom is a place of process. So when you see Jesus giving us a parable, most times when you read those parables, the focus of the parable is to decode to us or to explain to us the kind of process God takes his people through and what he intends to achieve. When you read the parables, one of the things Jesus is trying to achieve when you see the parable, the kingdom of God is like this. God is trying to use that parable to explain the way God takes his people through processes and what he intends to achieve. Are you with me? So in this parable, what God intends to achieve is to let us know that a season will come whereby God will come for us, whether for eternal glory or whether you're passing through any seasons of your life, that there is always a day when God shows up to say to his people, I have come for you. There is always a day when God answers prayers, really. There is always a day when God shows you to your world. There is always a day where that baby comes for There is always a day in every man's life whereby you see the result of what you're trusting God for. But this parable is more beautiful because God not only shows us the result, He also makes clear to us the process that leads to the result and things we should pay attention to. I'm dealing here on the subject matter of how to undo the midnight seasons of your life. Because now in this parable, there are five you know, uh, qualities. I'm going to do a little bit of teaching, then we switch into prayer at some point. Just, just stay with me. There are five qualities, you know, or features of these ten people. Bible called them ten virgins. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're talking about ten <laughs> women here. We're talking about people that have been blood washed by Jesus. They were ten. They were whole virgins. Not that they were whole Christians. So things happen to Christians. They were all Christian. Bible says, number two, they are vessels. They are gifted and called by God. They are treasures eating in every ethnic vessel. They have capacity. They have visions. They have a future. You know, they, they understand that there's a place called there for them. Are you with me? They, they, are not, they, are not, they are not playing game about their future. They are not shallow about the plans of God upon their life. They are not confused about what the future entails. Are you with me? They are vessels. But the third thing about them is that they have, all of them have oil. In other words, they have diverse dimensions of graces. <laughs> you would miss diverse dimensions of graces. You know, oil. Oil just means, you know, the, the purpose of oil, as you know, even for you just look, looking at it from a car perspective, you know that it's the one that makes the engine work. 
you know, no matter how beautiful a car is when there is no, except probably the electric car that we use now, you know, it, it smoothens the flow and the operation of an engine. And everybody has oil, everybody needs more oil, but oil are divers. But beyond that, there was a common experience for all of them. And that common experience is that all of them passed through nice season. So everybody wakes up in the morning, believe that this is a new season for my life, believe that, they, or probably you got, just got to a meeting and they gave you a prophetic word, you know, and, and, and that word was raging in your mind, say, hey, this is the season for me, and stuff like that. Let me tell you, this is a kingdom parable. Everybody that God is training, everybody that God loves, we always pass through dark seasons. You can call it silent season. You can call it nice season. Whatever you call it, everybody passes through nice seasons. And those are some of the things I was trying to emphasize tonight with Sunday, like last week Thursday, to let us understand that there are some of us under the sound of my voice that you've entered into a season of your life whereby you're going to break forth. That's what we call last Thursday, silent breaker. Silent breaker. We're going to break forth. It's a season whereby the sounds of heaven is going to ring aloud over your life. And I'm, oh my goodness, I feel that spirit again. And I'm saying that convincingly to you that you, will, you are in this 2023 don't take this as a motivational statement. 2023 is a year of breakthrough for you. I know you're in the first quarter. It's a year as in you will, you will, you will taste the goodness of God. You will touch the visibility of the Spirit. You will embrace you know, the loving kindness of God. He will show you the token of His love. And your enemy will be silent. You will experience some dynamic visibility that can only be opened up by God as a, as a, as a testimony of approval over your life in 2023. I'm telling you that. I am saying that 2023, yes, as you enter into the month of April, is a year whereby everyone should be open visibly upon your life and you will have reasons not just to rejoice but to share with others. Are you listening to me? I am telling you that this year is pregnant and is pregnant for you. You have been marked by destiny. You're, there is something about 2023 with your name on it. And I want you to be encouraged. But this is where I'm going to you. I, oh my, thank you, Jesus. I will advise somebody. What I'm saying now, you just want to try to ask me, what's the evidence that 2023 is going to be dynamic for me? Go and listen to what I just prayed like three or four weeks ago about instructions. It's on YouTube. Go and look for it on Grabs about three or four weeks ago. You will understand science. One of the major things is that when you are pregnant and you can't feel it, you're in a dangerous zone. You're in the dangerous zone. You're in a dangerous zone. There are ways by which you know that God is up to something good, something better in your life. Apart from the fact that He, he, he breathes on you, He speaks to you, He steers you up, He supplies you with joy. One of the ways by which you know that God is up to something good in your life is when he takes you through process. So these are 10 victims. God took all of them, and I want to mark that word, all of them to process. And the process is the night season. Night season. Whether they have got vessels, whether they've got oil, everybody must pass through the night season. <laughs> they say, well, you pass through it in the natural, you pass through the spirit. There are two sets of people or three sets of people in the other exam. It's either you are passed through it at your house, or you are about to pass through it, or you don't even know that is what we call midnight. But let me tell you, whatever your circumstance, you're part of it. Some of you under the exam, but you know that you just came out of soap. <laughs> you know you just came out of soap. Hey, you know, if I if I begin to talk to, about even people under the sound of my voice now, I can begin to use your testimony to buttress this. Hallelujah, to buttress this. This is this is this is where I'm going to now, and this is why God wants me to bring out this 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 subject matter tonight. He said, I should tell you that your mindset is equally important. I didn't say it's only important, I said your mindset is equally important in your midnight season. When they were 10, and God said, fight for foolish, fight for wise, they were not foolish because they were less spiritual. No, they were all spiritual. The Bible said they were all virgins. What distinguished them, or distinguished some to be wise and some to be foolish, is not their spiritual state, it's their mind state. 
I'm telling you, in spiritual warfare, in midnight season, your mind is equally important as your spirit. Because you don't only fight by your spirit in warfare, you fight also based on the content of your mind, convictions of your mind. So look at it from Amplified Version. The Bible says five of them were foolish. What does it mean to be foolish? The Bible says they were thoughtless, without foresight. They say five were wise. Why were they wise? The Bible says they were sensible, intelligent, and prudent. These treasures, these virtues, these qualities are not just spiritual quality. They are mindset. The mindset. If your mind is empty, it is difficult for the spirit to help you in spiritual warfare, in midnight season. You know why that is important? Because <laughs> spiritual warfare on this side begins with the spirit, but battles are won in the mind. Won in the mind. And this is what I want to share with you because I'm trusting God. Let, 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 let me tell you something. <laughs> this enemy we're fighting is, is so strategic. It's so strategic. It's so strategic. As I pass it again and again, I observed that there are many people, for instance, now God has me to inspire somebody today, that you're already out of your midnight, but your mind is still in the midnight. Your body, your spirit is out of darkness. God has answered it. But the pain that you have not been delivered from is still tying you to the past. And you're thinking that you are still there, but you are out. Let me give you an example. Some years ago, I met a guy in UK and said to me, and said to me, he said, Pastor, I put in my application in home office for visa. Are you still with me tonight? For visa. And this is three years. Home office has not answered me. I said, let's just trust God. Go answer. So I couldn't, we couldn't work, couldn't do anything. I said, okay, don't worry. God's going to do it. A few months down the line, I met him. He said, how you doing, bro? He said, they've answered me. And I was so rejoicing with him. I was rejoicing for him and I'm glad. But you know what I observed? He wasn't happy. It, it doesn't look like somebody the Lord has answered their prayer. Oh, Jesus, that's the word. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will look like someone that God has answered their prayers. <laughs> are, are you with me? Can you imagine somebody be pregnant but with seven months or eight months ready for it <laughs> and no delivery day and they are just acting as if they, are not, they don't want the baby to come. They don't rejoice in the gift and the blessings of God, in the visible blessings of God. This guy's mind that was polluted so much that even when God answered it, he doesn't have stamina to go out with his life. He doesn't have stamina to build that career again. He doesn't have stamina to, you know, to dream big again because if the death devil cage you in midnight the goal is not only after you just coming out it's about what is the state of your mind when you are out what is the state of mind when you are done with the night season will you be able to think through be excited about life pursue life recover from life the same way you do that being if you didn't pass through night season there are some of you understand my voice you can be a pastor then you you find yourself under a ministry and because they treated you badly by the time you come, even though you are out, you are in your day, you have capacity to pray, but you, your mind is still caged in that pain that you don't even have ability to come out and give expression to your gifting and capacity because your body is out, your spirit is out, but your mind is still tattered tonight, season. But I pray recovery for you tonight. In the name of Jesus, right, that God will not allow any garbage, any pollution to be retained in your mind, even when you are out. You are out, not just spiritually, you are out spirit, soul, and body. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the energy in your spirit will be the energy in your soul, will be the energy in your body. In the name of Jesus, you will not look like what you are passed through. Oh my God, are you with me? You will not look like what you are passed through. You will not look like what you have suffered. Your expression will not be like what pain that you are passed through because the God we serve is a God that have an ability to help your mindset in the night season. Mindset in the night season is critical. It's critical. So when you see these eight virgins, these ten virgins rather, coming out, coming out, and God is saying five of them were foolish. 
what God is trying, what Jesus is trying to do, tribal, is to give us statistics of the intention of the enemy anytime we pass through night season. So God Himself is saying that ten people are taken through night season. Only five came out with a good mindset. You should know that this is a very serious matter. That ten people pass through the same challenges. When God shows up in their life to say, I'm delivering you, only five survived. 50% of believers. That's what the Bible says, 50% of believers. When they pass through midnight, does not come out or turn out well on the other side. And I'm praying that you will not be part of that. And the reason they didn't turn out well is not because God didn't show up. It's not because they are not spiritual. It's not because it's not because their legs were tied. It's because their minds, their minds, their minds, their minds. Look at the case of Lazarus, Mary and Martha. Jesus came in and he said, Lazarus in his nice season, we're going to wake him up. And two sisters were talking to Jesus, they were led by Jesus, they were fed by Jesus, they were disciples of Jesus. When they were responding to the recovery of Lazarus, they were having a different... Boy, both of them are spiritual. Both of them believe in restoration and life. Both of them believe Lazarus. But one of them believes that you can do it now. The other believes you can do it then. Oh, Jesus, I don't want to just follow God that can do it then, I believe, because God is the same today, tomorrow, <laughs> yesterday, today. If he can do it yesterday, it's because he can do it today. If he can do it today, because he can do it tomorrow. And you have to have that mindset. I am praying tonight for your mindset, for your mindset, for your mindset, for your mindset. I am praying for your mindset, that that mindset will be clean. It will be clear and it will be convincing. <laughs> irrespective of what you're passing through and the season you're in, that your mindset will be clean, it will be clear, and it will be convincing. Oh, somebody say amen to that. Somebody say amen to that. Let, 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 let me do what I call, by the inspiration of God, what I call a mind, a mind test. A mind test. Which is a mind test. If you, in your mind, you're in a nice season, in the nice season means, or even any season of your life, how do you respond to bad news? How it shows the state of your mind. How do you respond to bad news? How do you respond to bad news? How do you react to negative information? How do you react? It shows the state of your mind. And you have to learn to do this mindset. For instance. You're sitting down and they just told you, oh, somebody that is spiritual, has savage or whatever, has an issue. Probably died or sick or whatever. If you turn the first way, let me tell you three things that comes out of your mind, depending. The first thing that might come to your mind is, that, oh, thank God it did not happen to me. That's the mindset. Thank God it did not happen to me. I'm telling you, you need to be careful of that mindset. Because when you enter the midst night season of your life, you cannot have that mindset. Because that mindset has, it, has a tendency to be proud. That you're okay if it is not you. That's the mindset. There's another mindset that says, I believe. When you hear those kind of bad news, you say, I believe this will not happen to me. I believe. And that belief system is based on the conviction that he that washes over Israel does not sleep nor slumber. Are you with me? That is the that is mindset of faith. But there is another mindset and that's the mindset of fear. When you hear bad news, then you say, I just hope it does not happen to me. I just hope it doesn't happen to me. You know, you begin to add your, because anytime you hear bad news, it makes you feel as if probably you're next. It's also a mindset. It's a mindset of fear. So when you, when, when we enter the dark seasons of our lives, one of the major things is that if our mindset is not well, the enemy use it and capitalize on it. Even when God shows up and says, it's your time of delivery, your mind would have still caged you. And that's why I'm praying for you today, again and again, that God is going to open a channel of spirit to strengthen your mind, to strengthen your mind. That a revelation of truth, information about destiny will not just reside in your spirit, but have an ability to have residency in your mind, in your mind, in your mind, in your mind. Are you with me? 
Let me do the little bit content, then we we'll begin to pray. Bible says, five were foolish. According to Greek, the word foolish man means morose, means to be dull, without an edge. It means lacking ability or strength to move. This one is really touching because I've seen people a lot in which when they are delivered and their season break forth, they have lost ability to move. They've lost ability to move. And unfortunately, they don't even have encouragers around them that has an ability to untie them. The Bible says when Paul, when, when, when Lazarus was in the grave, Jesus said, Lazarus, comfort. Bible says he that was dead came forth. But Bible says he was tied in the hands and on the feet. If Jesus has left him like that, I'm telling you, the guy would have been away but still useless. But Jesus said to them, which had encouragers around him, he said, lose him and let him go. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ that God will bring relationships across and will help you to build, not just to bring, but to build relationships that has stamina and ability to whisper good things to you in the season that is right, in midnight season. Look, Job, Job had an experience in God, which was a process that leads to a result that pleases God. But by the time three of his friends came, the Bible said they sat down for three days. It three days, they sat down, they were looking at him, they couldn't see anything. One of the worst that happens is for you to be passing through a process and people around you does not have a clue what you're going through. There's not no encouragers around. I'm telling you, it's a terrible thing. So you have to trust God to bring and to build around you people that has a word, that has an ability to whisper strength to your mind while you are passing through it. And I raise my hand by the mercy of God in the name of Jesus. Whether you are in, listen to me, listen to me. If you understand my voice, you might say this is not a message for you. It's fine. Let me tell you why I'm, I'm, I'm serious about this. I'm serious about this because we can have 10 people in the congregation and one person is passing through dry season. Or midnight season. The temptation is for pastors to focus on the nine. Knowing fully well that the nine, they are fine, then we can push things together and count yourself to have 90% result. But the kingdom of God does not operate that way. The kingdom of God, Bible says, is like unto a, unto a man that has 100 sheep or a sheep and one was missing. Bible says he left the 99 to go and search for one. Is the one that I'm talking to here tonight. He's the one I'm talking to here tonight. And left the 99 in the wilderness or on the mountains and went after one. And when he saw the one, he picked him up and he rejoiced <laughs> with that one that was discovered more than the 99. And you are the one I'm talking to today. I'm talking today to let you understand that one of the ways you can prove or is visible that you're going to come out well, come out brilliant, come out beautifully after that midnight season of your life is simply because God is working on your mindset. God is calling attention. Wash your mind, 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 wash your mind. If it is a man you lost, you need to wash your mind. Like one man of God says, because to get another man, you need your mind. <laughs> I'm telling you, if your head is down, <laughs> because when the midnight season, you need to recover your head, because by the time you come out, you will need your head to enjoy this. Now you listen to me. If it is your anointing that looks as if diminished because we're in the night nice season, you need to keep hold of your <laughs> of your mind because when you get to the other side, you will need this anointing to continue with your life. As you listen to what I'm talking about, so if you are down, make sure your mind is not down. If you are down, make up your make sure your mind is not down. Make sure your mind is not down. I am telling you the difference between the wise and the foolish virgins is the state of their mind. That's what I'm telling Is the state of their mind. That's the, what accelerates your recovery for midnight season is the state of your mind. Is the state of your mind. If your mind is not like, oh, are you listening to what I'm talking about? And I'm praying that God will strengthen your mind. You're in a marriage that you spent like seven, eight years and things are not working and it looks at it, this is night. This is danger. You couldn't even tell anybody what you are passing through. And in, as far as heaven is concerned, they know that yes, there are errors, there are mistakes in this marriage, but they're using it to build you up. You've got to learn to, you've got to keep your mind. If not, by the time you come out, you'll be one preaching to everybody that all men are wicked and bad because of the state of the mind, because what the devil wants to do in midnight season is not just to, uh, to stop you from recovery, it's to make sure your mind is damaged. And if your mind is damaged, you cannot enjoy the beautiful things of God when you enter into a new season of your life. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. 
You can't. You can't dress on breaches of God because your mind has limited you. Has limited you. So being foolish here yeah, is not an insult. It's a state of mind. To be dull, without an head, lacking the ability or strength to move, lack a grip on reality. You know, acting dull as brilliant. This is what it means in Greek. You know, it refers to a physical nurse causing one to become dull. <laughs> to become dull. Because it looks as if it's a pause season or it's a bus stop, then you become so dull because your mind is not active. Are you with me? And the fact that your mind is not functioning because when a season of your life does not mean you should just ignore the growth of your mind. You should, no, 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 no. This, this is what I'm saying to you. Being a pastor over the years, I've discovered, <laughs> I've discovered that, that many believers scream spirituality, but they are dull in their mind. They are dull in their mind. And when the enemy notices that your mind is dull, what it does is to uh, when it brings affliction, the probability of him winning becomes easier because of the state of your mind. Don't forget that when Bible talks about Romans chapter 12, you know, be not conformed to what be, be renewed, you know, be renewed by the renewing of your mind, metamorphose, metamorphosize. In other words, to, to allow the Holy Spirit to take your mind through a process in which what is in the Spirit of God for you is the same thing content in your mind. Why that is important is because on the battlefield of, you know, or, or, you know, of, the, of life, it's not just the Spirit. It's also the mind. That's where we're on the head. It's the mind. It's the mind. I'm saying again, the Lord will strengthen your mind. It will be clean, it will be clear, and it will be convincing. Somebody type that for me. It will be clean, it will be clear, it will be convincing. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Some of you understand my voice. If you enter the midnight season of your life or face some challenges of your life, the prophetic work hanging over your life will just disappear. You know why? Because, because you, you are not convinced. You are, as in, you are not convinced. If I tell you that you will experience, you know, have some, you know, some, some promise of God will come to pass in your life, suddenly, will you believe it? What will make you to believe is depends on the state of your mind. How convincing are you of the promises of God over your life? How convincing are you? Glory to God. Hallelujah. How convincing? Blessed of God over your life. Mindset. Poor mindset will always show. In the days of battle. Poor mindset. We always show. In the days of battle. Glory to God. I wrote it down here. I said, nice seasons of life. Does not respect anointing. It respects character. Does not just respect anointing. It respects character. And character is the state of mind. <laughs> it's spirituality. It's the state of mind. The state of mind. The state of mind. Oh, glory to God. I feel I've released some burdens to somebody today. The state of mind. Let me give you a little bit of content just to highlight some things across you. Reasons why we pass through that, that season. Because you understand the sound of my voice. You're a lady more than 30 years. Saying the brother is not coming. Been praying over something for one, two, three years. It seems as if it's not happening. When you trust God again and again over for something and it's not coming off to a point whereby you're even tired of praying, I'm telling you, you're just zoning into a nice season. <laughs> I'm telling you, you're just zoning into a nice season. Just praying into a nice season. And it does happen. It does happen. You might have six, like I was talking to a dear uh, person today. You might have six dimensions of your life, your finance, your spiritual, whatever, and everything is things that, but there may be just one. And you just say, God, when will this be over? When, when will this switch? And you can also be here, yeah, it can even be almost all of them. Because one, six, one dimension of your life is what foils the others. If you have a family, you might have peace and progress. If you have money, you know, you might have the opportunity to want to do this and that. Are you, are you with me? And you're saying, God, when will this be over? When will this be over? It's because we're just entering into a, into, a, into a nice season. And don't let anybody tell you that nice seasons are not real. Simply because they are not passing through this. However, when you are out of a nice season, don't pound another one for yourself. 
<laughs> but, uh, because, because if God does not lead you into the wilderness, you might not survive it. If God does not want to lead you into the wilderness, you might not survive it. So when Jesus came out of the water, being baptized by John the Baptist, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came upon him and he was led to the wilderness to be tempted for the devil. That is what we call night season. 40 days, 40 nights. In other words, night season and season in your life whereby God determines who has the permission to encourage you. <laughs> so when Jesus got to that wilderness, he was there for 40 days. 40 days, there was no, there was no, no communication. He didn't speak with any human being for 40 days. And by the time you have an opportunity to have a, con a for first conversation, after 40 days, it was with devil. But after that, the Bible says, angels came to encourage him. Because God takes us through nice to process. Some of you, the reason you are where you are is because you trust men too much. You trust men too much. You know how to calculate. I've got this person. You know, you rely so much on your connection. You say, I've got a global connection. I'm not saying it's wrong to have it. But you must get to a level in your life that you must know that if anybody will favor you, it must be because God permits it. Who say it? I have it come to pass. I said, the Lord commanded it. And when God begins to see that the assignment is given to you, it's so dynamic and he wants to be the one to be the source supply. The first supply, the first supply, the source supply. Then what it does is that it takes you out of from the from the grips and opportunity of encouragers. And some of you, when you have somebody to help you, do notice that as soon as you ask them to help you, that's when they lack the capacity to help you. Then you think it's spiritual attack. No. God sometimes might, it might not sometimes be a spiritual attack. It might just be because God is tailoring you to a dimension whereby you can trust him to choose who he decides to allow to help you. Then he zones you into a verses. <laughs> zones you into a verses. But by the time you come out, you will know you can say like an American in God we trust. <laughs> Not in a God we trust. Because it's possible for you to be in the kingdom and your trust is based on information, in praise of what you know, in praise of who you know, and not based on God. And when God wants to take that heart, boom, it decides who he allows to encourage you. And I'm saying to somebody today that let me just encourage you because you say, oh, goodness, goodness, I've not, you know, it's been one or two years. I don't even know what God is saying about my life. My life is just dry, you know, stuff like that. Some of you know that is my voice now. You've been through it and you are coming out gradually. And if you are under the sound of my voice, you are still in it or you're about to enter into it, we bring an encouraging word to you. <laughs> that yet though you pass through the valley of the shadow of death, you shall fear no evil because he is with you. He is the one we trust. He is the one, not a person we trust. He is the one we trust. And if you can trust him, we bring God. He will choose those who has the right. So the friends of Job came to Job and they were trying to, they, they were convincing him because they didn't come with it. They, they, let me tell you, people cannot give the right to expression to what you are passing through if they have not passed through a process. Some of the things I'm telling you now, I have conviction, capacity, both in the spirit and natural, to encourage you in respect of what you're passing through because of what I have been through. You cannot allow men who don't have process to correct people or guide people through a process. Through a process. <laughs> it doesn't work. So the three friends of Job, the three friends of Job came in, they saw that they could they, they, they couldn't have anything to say. By the time they saw their mind to even convince Job, they could only tell him that you have done something wrong, done something wrong. And let me say this clearly to you. The fact that your mind you are in the midnight season does not mean you are a sinner. It's not doesn't mean you're a sinner. It's not everybody that passes talk that they do it because of their negligence or disobedience to the Spirit of God. It's not, it's not. And that was a challenge because we can be in this church and everybody is screaming testimony time. I have this, I have that, I have that. And you are just sitting there and say, when is it going to be mine? What you don't know is that somebody that is testifying today is telling you the result. is not sharing the process with you. But he has been a, through a process before he could open his mouth to say the Lord has done this to you. Why will you compare yourself with Why you are passing through your own process trying to compare yourself with somebody that is coming out of their own process? You should rejoice because somebody is reaping as an evidence that your sowing is going to bring forth fruit. And we need to be careful the way we celebrate miracles. Be careful the way you cel we celebrate miracles. <laughs> I've said it again and again. Inside every miracle, there is a process. Again and again. Inside every miracle, there is a process. In fact, the God of suddenly is a God of suddenly to those that saw him when he did it suddenly. <laughs> it's a process. There's a process. Jesus went to meet a guy. What, by the pool of Siloam? 
I said, you want to be made though? The guy said, nobody is pushing me into the water, so because of that, nothing's going on. It's happening to me. Jesus said, you want to be, even without his faith, God said, pick your mat and walk. Everybody that saw it said, oh man, this is the miraculous event of God. Jesus has come, you no, know, God has come to man to do this. But the truth of the matter is that, how can a man be by a pool for 35 years without giving up? He didn't commit suicide, he didn't die. You know, he kept his ass. You know, for 35 years we pray that when Jesus came to heal him, he still has the ability to remove to, to receive his miracle. How old is your problem? How old is your problem? It's just five years, no shy. No shy. Then all the pastors are not anointed again. <laughs> you better keep your mind. You better keep your mind. You better keep your mind. Because by the time you come out, it will be triplet. God is going to give to you, but you need a mind to carry it. So that your womb is not even sick by the time the baby is coming. Are you with me? How old is your problem? 35 years. This guy was expecting, you no, know, expecting season to shift for him for 35 years. He didn't give up. He didn't commit suicide. He didn't leave the temple. He didn't leave the church. He did not abuse the pastor. He did nothing. He just stayed there for 35 years. Then Jesus came in and he saw everybody that was lying down there sick. He stepped on all of them. He did not touch anyone. He went straight after this man. And why did God help him? He said, because he has been there for a while. Ah! My goodness, God, <laughs> I know you've been there for a while. God is going to bring you out. He's going to bring you out. He's going to bring you. You've been there for a while, but your mind is still stable on God. Your trust is still stable on God. You still have energy to believe that God answers prayer. When you are prayed again and again, even to make it worse, you pray for others. God answer you. wonder when he's going to answer yours. I tell you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your mind is your heart is fresh, your goal is pure, your spirit is clear and clean. I prophesy over your life, your day will break. I say, your day will break. The silent breaker will visit you with instruction that will show you how to navigate out of what you're passing through. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo. My goodness, I feel that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some broke so big in the bush. Who? Yes, he will bless that business. It will come life again. Yes, it will come life again. It he will come life again. You started it, you started it based on connection. Now you will restart it based on trust in God. Yes, you will, you will restart based on what? Trust in God. Trust in God. Thank you, Jesus. Mindset. Yes, right mindset. In the days of storm, if your mind is faulty, your recovery will be shallow. Try that down. If your mind is faulty, your recovery will be shallow. The goodness of God will be visible in your life, but you won't feel it. You won't feel it. I pray we will not be foolish Christians. That's what I'm, I'm praying. I don't want to use that word foolish, but that's what the Bible says. Foolish virgin. We will not be foolish Christians. We will not be foolish Christians. We know what it means to carry a clear, clean, and convincing mind. Clear, clean, and convincing mind. Especially in the night season. I'm telling you, if you're joining right now, uh, what we're dealing with is mindset, midnight mindset. That when you're passing through a season of storm, a season of midnight, a season of struggling in your life, your spirit is alive, your body is alive, your mind must be sane. Your mind must be sane. It is your mind that you use to benefit from the full recovery <laughs> when you're out. Your mind must be sane. Your mind must be sane. It must be clean. It must be clear. It must be convincing. Hallelujah. It must be clear. Some of you understand my voice now. The body of Christ has gone to a point where people don't trust God again. People come to church, but people said don't believe God. People have turned the church to a place where we fellowship, only fellowship or meet or social guard meet with other people or just a cultural thing or a traditional thing to do. But the desire to want to go deeper, go further, you know, the people are afraid of process because they don't know whether they will come out. But let me tell you, you will come out. You will, in fact, you are coming out. You are coming out. Coming out. People are scared of dealings again. There are, some, there, are some, there are some decisions some of us cannot make right now because the last person that you saw maybe did not survive it. And that has registered, you know, into your mind. And God is saying, I want to take you through a process to make you an example. But you're scared because there's no template, there's no proof, you know. And the devil has already messed up your mind. But I'm telling you, you're receiving grace and ability to carry a clean, clear, and convincing mind. 
out of this meeting tonight. In the name of Jesus. Are you still with me? Are you still with me? Let me tie this up. I will continue next week where it's Thursday. I tell you, I've not, I've not even done justice to 30% of my note. Yeah, I will continue next week Thursday. Yeah, my midnight mindset part two. I will continue by the mercy of God. Some of the reasons, let me itemize this to you. Some of the reasons why our destiny attracts nice season. Number one, it may be because of correction of errors. God sometimes wants to correct errors. And one of the ways to do it is to take us out of the crowd. If he corrects us in public, it's dangerous, it's shameful. It does not even help the image of the father. There is no genuine father that corrects his sons in public. So he takes you out of the crowd, brings you into a quiet season so that he can correct you. Because those he loves, he trains. Are you with me? He loves the train. And I will advise you, if that is what you are passing through, please take his correction seriously. Because if you don't yield to the correction of the Father in the secret place, you will yield to the abuse of the devil in the public place. Correction of error. Another reason why we pass through dark seasons is because it's preparation for destiny. It's also part of preparation for destiny. Everybody that became something tangible in God passed through a dry season, a quiet season. You know, sometimes you, <laughs> sometimes you just, you see David being anointed and say, he's the next king of Israel. You will just think somebody's going to vacate the throne the next day for him to become king. Not knowing that he's on a journey of about 13 years in the wilderness with all his anointing. Oh, yes. Why, 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 with all this anointing <laughs> and some of the things God is telling me, why, why can I be anointed and people does not like me? Oh, <laughs> it's part of preparation <laughs> because anointing attracts both lovers and haters. <laughs> I am telling you, you better don't allow any salt to kill you. No, don't allow salt to kill you. No, no allow salt to kill you. You have to skip your head. You have to keep your head. And one of the ways by which God does is to take you through a nice season. Because when you're in a nice season, the enemy find it difficult to see you. What makes the enemy to spot you is because there's a light on you. There's a light on you. He speaks about you. Then when God announces you, the enemy get attracted to you. So when God wants to keep you, you know, you know, from those haters, he just give take into it. And when people when 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 God shows not to reveal your word, because some of you say, Oh, when I get to this place, I want them to know that I'm anointed. But when you just get there and they just treat you like normal person, even though you're just coming out of a serious revelation. <laughs> then you get to a meeting or get to a place where they just talk to you and they even call you bro. And you just how will you be treating me like that with all the revelation that I know? It's because of the season you're in. And you have to learn the, 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 the ability to be humble. You know? <laughs> about, about that. You know? So, why do we pass with me nice or correction season? Correction of error, preparation for destiny, pruning of character. Pruning of character. This is very important. When you see anybody in public place, or you see anybody entering into marriage or you know anything you're doing that affects their relationship with other people and you discover that there some characters are just, are, are, are just visibly absent. I'm not saying everybody is perfect, but some characters are visibly absent. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's because they've not passed through any dresses that season. And if their destiny matters to God, which I believe it does, it will take you through that dark season. God knows that if he gives you, some of you, if he gives you 5,000 pounds a month right now, <laughs> your county will know. You know, we just go and buy one BMW with one serial saying you that you just be making this around the street. He knows. And he knows he can, he can do it for you. But his own concern is that, how will I benefit? How will the body of Christ, how will society benefit in your blessing? The holy this to do. It's not that he will not bless you. He will just hold that blessing and take you through a pruning of character. And when you come out, you will now discover that, man, it's more than all this noise and stuff. Are you with me? There are other ways by which um, God um, takes you to rest. I have three or four more, but I just feel I should stop right there. So the question now, this is my prayers for you, is that how do you... Are you still with me tonight? Come on now, let me know. Are you still with me tonight? Somebody say yes, yes, yes. Let me pause for two minutes. Lampro sifalaka poso pekete. Are you still with me? Masha kata poso pekete prasu pekete bosha. Thank you, Tayo. God bless you, Tayo from Dubai. I can see all your messages. Adekunle, God bless you. Fakopalo koso prekete balagando sikete beche. Victor Tavia, are you still there? Zanto sivagabasha. Oluwa, 
lobun mi akomolede. Wow. Thank you. It will be clear, cleaning, and convincing. Oh, yes, you're still with me. Topper, what's up? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, your mind is important. Your mind, your spiritual warfare is critical. It's critical. It's critical. It's critical. Many does not survive battles of life. And it's, you see it all over social media. You see it over social media. It's the state of mind. State of mind. The state of mind. State of mind. Glory to Oh, Makando Fekese Froko Supalato. The Kupalando Seke Froko Supe Leko Froko Supala. You get the boy. I perceive my spirit. Somebody under a spiritual attack in your dream is as if they came in to touch your eyes. You know, touch your eyes. I just see like somebody touching, I don't know which which of the one touching the heart, like removing it. That's that's an attack that you have. Whatever it is, it means it's cancelled. Whatever it is, whatever it is, it means it cancelled. Not it tampers with your vision, not it tampers with your future. Yes, not it tampers with your sight. Whatever it means, it is cancelled. Now let me tell you, the devil does not have audacity to threaten your destiny. He did not meet anyone. Through him, all things were made. That's Jesus Christ. And without him, was not anything made. You do, Listen to me. Conviction is a proof that your mind is sin. Conviction. You have to be a man and a woman. I know there are some seasons in our life, <laughs> you know, where we pass through stuff. You know, my wife and I travel, and that's where we know the state of our mind. Not the state of our spirit. I was a pastor. Then we, then we went to 154 flat, um, 154 uh, heights, the tallest building in the world. <laughs> we, we went there. By the time we got to the 154th level, my mind was shaking. That was where I knew that, boy, you have to stay at your level. I said, the only thing that can make me to do at night, that I can do in the, in the year, is for me to fly, you know, from one country to the other. You know, and that's even by faith. But for me to just, and, and the guy said, come, come and see, my mind was shaking. My wife was just, you know, cooling, you know, she's happy about that. I said, thank God. It's when we came down to 125th and I discovered there's only people that get to 154th level. Only. <laughs> then, a few days later, we now went on another, another ride into the desert. Then we saw the difference between, you now it was now my tongue, one one. It was now my tongue. Because, summer, summer, in the journey of life, you know, there are some ways by which, and that's why we have to pray for ourselves, pray for our, uh, for our children, that God will keep their heart clean. We keep the heart clean because the devil is so strategic. He can bring thoughts, images, and plans across your mind. It can even be when you're even a teenager, even less than a teenager. That it is when you now grow up years later that the devil will be capitalizing on that images he has built. And when you now enter a season of spiritual warfare, midnight season of your life, you will discover that those things that you didn't pay attention to when you're young, those are the things. Because in my mind now, when it, when we got to that 154th floor, you know, everything that was coming to my mind were the movies I watched. You know, all those movies you watched, as well climbing the wall, you know, the, the snipers, those, those are the things I watched. I was just a man, I'm not, I can only watch this, I can't be part of this. No, it was so visible, it was so visible. But we have to trust God by the blood of the Lamb, by the power of the communion. You know, a clear, clean and convincing mind. That the only thing that I permit to resonate with me again and again, spiritual warfare, is the ability to respond to the plans of God for my life. Are you listening to what I'm talking about? It's what I'm talking about. So we have to trust God, you know, to for mental growth. Mental growth. Mental growth. One of the things I've noticed and I'm paying attention to, even as a pastor, is that when we come together in church and we're preaching, we can't be telling people's story. We need to read the scriptures. We need to read the scriptures. Guys, we need, listen to me. The knowledge of God. One rema from the spirit. One rema from the spirit can bring stability to your mind. One rema. It might take you time to get it. But knowledge is so powerful that when it comes, when it comes, hey, when it comes, it's so convincing. It's so convincing. And one thing about Rema, a revelation of the Spirit, is that when it comes, he has an ability to put aside every, 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 every wrong, you know, information and, and mindset. Because revelation comes in to take over. Oh, God. It comes in to take over. So we have to pay attention. No? no? I tell you, brothers and sisters, sometimes you read the Bible, you're not picking revelation. That's not enough for you to drop it. 
You have to read it. Keep reading it. Because it has a way of, of giving your spirit ability to have something to work on. And one day, challenges will come. And it is that scripture that you have read 5-10 years ago. That you don't even know where it is in the Bible. That the Holy Spirit will be making use of to strengthen you. Are you with me? You can't, you can't play with knowledge. You can't, you can't, you, you can't, if you're a person that's not my you can't be preaching with people and you, you just stay with one scripture. You know, you can't quote two scriptures. You can't, you can't expose, you can't, you can't generate revelation from scripture. We can't tell stories all the time. We need to read the Bible. We need to read the Bible. Are you with me? I was traveling one day. We're going to church one day and then uh, my daughter was sitting down beside me and she said to me, she said, Dad, because we are traveling for the first time living there, so she was feeling somewhat agitated. I said, don't worry, we, we, we were in Sivans. And by the time she woke up, she said to me, Dad, say there's a scripture I want you to find for me. He said, what is it? He said, there's a scripture somewhere, somewhere that says, where my father and mother leaves me, God will not leave me. <laughs> I know where it is in Isaiah. Now I go to, I will search for it and I give it to her. And she said to me, I like this because now that you are traveling, I know definitely that you might not be there, but I know that God is there. Come on. I didn't know when she had that scripture, but it was useful when she needed it the most. If only Ghost BC to right now, what scripture will you work on? What scripture? I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh, my land of fake pro. You know what I'm praying for now? Task for knowledge. Task for knowledge. Task for truth. Desire to read. Desire to study. Ability to meditate. Mark also, can you pray that over your life? Can you pray that over your spouse? Can you pray that over your children? Say in the name of Jesus, I refuse to be a shallow Christian. I refuse to be a shallow Christian. I go deeper and deeper, wiser and wiser, better and better. In the name of Jesus, by time God is teaching me, by time God is training me, by time my heart is full of meditation. In the name of Jesus Christ, my heart is filled with goodness. I refuse to be a shallow Christian. I refuse to be a shallow Christian. I, I refuse refuse to be a shallow Christian. I, deep apparently, refuse to be a shallow Christian. I am loaded with knowledge. I have intimacy with the Spirit of God. I know what the Word of the Lord says. I have inspiration from the Father. I am not a shallow Christian. My ears are open to the cancer of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, and I decree over my life, I proclaim for the next seven years of my life, daily, regularly, I have ability to assimilate, capacity to receive, to retain, and to release in the days to come in the name of I am loaded with the knowledge of the Spirit of God. I know what the Father thinks about me. I know what the Father says about me. I know my identity in Christ. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke carnality of my life. I grow in knowledge. I grow in intimacy. Every spoken word of God over my life dominate my thought. Revelations is terrible. In the day, in the night, I think the scripture. I meditate the scripture. I receive revelation beyond the opportunity to preach. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive ability to read the word and fill my mind with truth that the Holy Spirit will be able to make use of in the days of need. I refuse to be a shallow Christian. I refuse to be a shallow I, As in, I refuse to be a I refuse to be When you are shallow as a believer, I'm telling you, your mind is weak. Your mind is weak. The evidence that you're a shallow believer is not based on even how much you speak in tongues and all of that. Though they are good, it shows, it's reflected how about the state of your mind. How weak. How weak. How weak you are. How weak. How weak you are. Oh, glory to God. Are you with me tonight? I refuse to be a shallow Christian. I refuse to be a shallow Christian. I read the book of Ecclesiastes again and again. I don't. I just read it. I didn't know that one verse makes sense until when an attack came and we entered into a midnight season. I read the Bible. Then one day they just. I keep sharing this. They will just told us that we should go and abort a pregnancy, a last baby, simply because the boy is not going to turn out well. That is their own reports. 
Oh, my wife was crying. What is this? What kind of thing? We didn't ask for baby. How will you, you know, stuff like that. And I just woke up. I just, it was like midnight. I just woke up. I remember that big Bible. Just open it. 70 Oliver Cross. Open it in front of me. Just start speaking. So I have not done one hour when the scripture came. If it was not dead, it will not come. If, and if it was not dead, it will not come. A scripture just came. It says, as a child is from in the womb. And we did not know <laughs> how they grow in the mother's womb. He said, so is the ways of God from the beginning to the end. And God said to me, it is not doctors that create baby. It's me. Gabriel will be seven years. I'm telling you, it's seven years. Seven years. Seven years. Oh Lord, give me my husband. Give me my wife. I want to do it. Yeah, because before, before I met Lydia, my wife, one of the things my mom told me, she was just saying what is in her mind, but we didn't know. I didn't know it affected me. He said, oh, ladies, so you are very careful with their wishes, oh, even when they come to church. So in my mind, I was just saying that if you want to pick a wife, you have to pray very well because you can't pick a wish. <laughs> they should. Yeah, and at that time, what's the figure of a wish that you have? Probably the way they dress or the way they look, you know, if they are always, you know, you just, oh, too much of pain, you just, oh, this is just, you know, don't those things was just polluting my mind. Even though I was not spiritual, I was a Christian. Until revelation came. Until revelation came. <laughs> and I said, God, what is it? He said to me, Mark chapter 11. I can never forget. I don't write it down. It's over 20 years. I don't write down Mark chapter 11. And the Lord said to his two of disciples, he said, go to the city nearby, you know, <laughs> in which he has, you know, an ass has been tied and nobody has taught. He said to me, this, that scripture is the scripture to show you that you're sure. He said, she's, he said, a, a village now, but he said, she's going to be from a state that is close to me. You know, you, you know, to, it just, it just used that market level, that story to define my journey of marriage. If you don't have any scripture or any truth in your mind, I'm telling, I'm telling you, your mind will be weak again and again in the days of battle. This is battle. That's one of them. There are two other things I've noticed that we'll share with you next week. But let's stop there tonight because we've already spent down. Um, let's spend one hour. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, God said that you tell you, you are coming out. I will bring you out. You will not look like what you are passed through. I'm telling you. Is it marital? Is it financially? Is it ministry? You will come out. I will, he said, I will bring you out. You will not look like what you have passed through. You will look at your past. You will not be able to trace nice season. It will not be visible to any to see. Are you with me? <laughs> you come out. Tell it. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I command a journey of recovery for you. A journey of recovery for your family. That business will recover. That ministry will recover. That family will recover. In the name, you will recover from that head issue. You will get that energy again. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we bring you out by the power, by the mighty hands of God. By the mighty hands of God, you coming out. By the mighty hands of God, by the graciousness of the Father, by the beauty of the Spirit, you coming out. You coming out. Recover. You will not look like what you are passed through. Hallelujah. He said. I was talking to somebody today, and one of the things was telling me. Say those that are in their midnight and those that are in their four a.m. Both of both day, both seasons are dark, but one is closer to the daylight than the other. So I should encourage you that you are not just starting; you are about to come out. Hallelujah! Just just sticking in a little bit. You're close. This is not twelve midnight. This is four a.m. You're close to it. You're close to it. You can wake up tomorrow and you say, "Pig, I have a testimony. It has happened." I'm telling. you. I'm telling you, you've already waited. It's time for you to see what you have waited. Ah, oh, Jesus, I love that. You've already waited. It's time to see what you have waited for. It's time to see what you waited for. You're coming out. And we bring you out by the mighty hands of God. We bring you out like a baby from the mother's womb, fresh and clean. Clean and clear, convincing to everybody that this is what God has made. That you are an addition to a generation. And you've come to contribute your quota. In the name of Jesus, I bring strength to your soul. I bring energy to your soul. I ask that this season will be a season of revelation that has the ability to make you clean, clear, and convincing. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
midnight mindset. Your minds are energized, strengthened. And I ask in the name of Jesus that God will take you through a journey right now in which the knowledge that has an ability to refresh your mind and to clean up your mind begins to begin to have access to it. You, you open any channel, any, you know, any TV, a, any social media, you begin to have access to that truth that has an ability to help you. That is the season you're in right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, strength is given to you. Strength is given to you in the name of Jesus. And as I leave you tonight, if you're under the sound of my voice, and it seems as if everybody around you is out, you are the only one left, let me encourage you. God will leave the 99 to find you. That's what I've come to do today. <laughs> I said he will leave the 99 to find you. He will leave the 99 to find you. To let you know that you are that much important. That the blood of Jesus cannot be wasted because of you. He will leave the 99 to find you. And when you're found, he will rejoice over you. He will rejoice over you. And I rejoice over you. I celebrate, I salute your death. I believe in the God of your life. I believe, I believe. <laughs> and you begin to see your signs. You begin to see your sign. The songs of the night. The one that gives songs in the night. I will talk more about that next, next Thursday. Begin to see your signs. And you will come out. You will smell fresh. Smell nice. Smell unique. Smell dynamic. Not looking like what you have been through. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Right? He said that you tell somebody. He said, what I call this message is midnight mindset. He said, but that is not the word for you. He said, the word for you is midnight mantus. <laughs> it's midnight mantus. So you are coming out of this. With the stamina and the strength the generation has been crying and waiting for. Yes, you're coming out with it. Midnight, not the midnight mindset for you, it's a midnight mantle. The mantle is coming out, out of this experience. A calling is coming out. A global pundo is coming out, out of this. Out of this, in the name of the Lord Jesus, right? In a meeting like this, it makes more sense when I say I salute your destiny. <laughs> because your journey differs from mine. It differs from mine. Differs from mine. But whatever season I am in, even though it might be different from yours, my duty is to tell you that I salute <laughs> your destiny. I salute the dealings of God over your life. I salute the workings of the Spirit in your life. I salute your tenacity to stick on. I salute your ability to still comply and adhere strictly to the sound of the Spirit. I salute your energy to obey God when it was difficult. I salute your ability to stay there when there was no, there's no result. This is the time to say whether you are still swaying or reaping. <laughs> we salute your destiny. And if you are reaping, we salute your destiny because you are out now. And we are glad that you made it. <laughs> we are glad that you made it. We salute your destiny. <laughs> because you made it. We salute your destiny because it don't allow the world to corrupt you while you come out. It makes sense to salute your destiny. At your level, we salute you. We salute you. That you went to that battle and you came out. <laughs> you came out strong, not abusive. Hallelujah. <laughs> not disrespectful. You came out not fighting others. So why did you ignore me? You came out with genuineness of love. We salute your destiny. We salute your destiny. But that you for praying when you feel God is not answering. And you're still there for interceding and praying for others. And doing for others what it seems as if God refused to do in your life at the moment. We salute your destiny for sharing with others <laughs> what is meant for you and what you, what you need most. Salute your destiny. We salute you. I'm telling you, I salute your destiny again. Whatever levels you are, <laughs> I salute your destiny. You are a soldier. You are the one the Lord has sent. You matter to the kingdom. You are useful in his army. Yes, you are useful. You are somebody that God loves and God cares about. And you're going to come out brilliantly, beautifully, clean, clear, and convincing. Are you with me? Your mind? Clean, clear, and convincing. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, bless your people, stranger. And we rejoice 
for every over every breakthrough. We rejoice over every breakthrough. We rejoice over every breakthrough. We rejoice over every breakthrough. Intentionally, we thank you for over every process. For we know that if you are with us, things are going to work. Say, the Lord is your strength and shield. You are very happy in time of trouble. For we deliver you out of six trouble. Yea, the seventh one will not come near you. We rejoice in Jesus' name over this season you are here. And we're grateful to him for your life in Jesus' mighty name. That's how I can go tonight. Wow, time has really gone. I do I don't always want to spend more than one hour. Good night, family. Good night. Good night. That radio right is so good to see you. What's up? Are you still in Lagos? I'm in Lagos, next one by the grace of God. Though it's gonna be for a few days, but cash out with as many people I could. God bless you. Thanks for joining. Um Tayo from Dubai, God bless you. Ade Kunli Temitope, God bless you. We salute your destiny. Thanks for joining. Instagram family, thank you. Who are ministry, thank you for joining. Okpe, Okpe, all the Okpes. <laughs> God bless you. Bola, what's up? How you doing where you are? Ah, Mr. Charlotte Sunday. Always good to have you around here every time. She, God bless you. So guys, rejoice in the Lord, whatever this is. We come again. If you have any question in this area, please with you send them to me. Put it across from me. Send it to me on IG. You know, if and if you are confident you want to put it in now, put it in. Ask questions. Ask questions. What are what, what ask questions? Ask questions. So that we can help God can use us to help you take in to go through this. Because we're in a season in the body of Christ, that if we are not careful, we tend to pay attention to the night now and we ignore the one. We ignore the one. And this one, I've, oh Jesus, I've been, I've been, I've, 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 oh God, God has given me the understanding of this nice season, midnight season, for years, for years, for years, for years, because it's very, very simple. Because some of you don't know why you are passing through what you are passing through right now. You're just wondering, hey, 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 is it only me? That's another question, you know. And our job is to tell you, it's not only you, and it can never be only you. Praise God. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. Have a wonderful night. Love you. Love you, love you. And God bless you. In Jesus' name.